Hi, it's Coach Joe Lucas, and welcome to the Magellan Network Show. My goal inside of this communication, this show, is to share with you my nearly 30 years of coaching some of the most successful financial advisors in North America. We're going to be talking about strategies, syntaxes, we're going to bring guests on from time to time, and I'm going to share with you what's working now. So think of this show as sort of like a little one-on-one -on -one kind of mini coaching cast, if you like, where we're going to be going in depth from time to time on strategies to help you grow your business, get more effective, become more efficient, find balance in your time management, grow your business, and quite frankly, whatever else is going on in the world today. So before we get to today's episode, I'd love for you to do a couple things for me. Number one, make sure that if you're watching this on YouTube, that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're doing the audio, make sure that you give us a review on whether it's Spotify or Apple, you know, we'd really appreciate that. And quite frankly, that does help, it does matter when you rate things and like things and subscribe to things, it helps us get the word out to more of the industry. And lastly, I have a very special gift for you. Go to MagellanNetwork.net, so one word, MagellanNetwork.net, and I have for you a complimentary membership, 100% gratis, where you can tap into about between 50 and 75 hours of master classes, forms, tools, templates, and strategies. So please go ahead and uh, make sure you go ahead and get that claim. Smash the like button and subscribe. And uh, please go ahead and leave us a review on whatever podcasting platform you're on. And now let's get to this week's episode. Hi, it's your coach Joe Lucas and welcome to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. Hey, in this episode, we're going to conclude our three-part series on how to scale your business. So episode one, we talk about your mindset, that all businesses are mirror images of the leader's psychology slash mindset. Episode number two, we talked about people and talent and how as you grow your business, you know, uh, talent management, the attracting of talent, the elevating of talent, the retention of talent will make or break you as you scale your advisory business. So today we are going to talk about systems and systems are kind of cool, right? They're part of the recipe. So again, you need all three presents, not one versus the other or two versus one. It's all three being present. So when we talk about systems, if you read the ebook, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, which is a great book, by the way, it's got nothing to do with this business, but it's got everything to do with business. And why that is important is because you are a business owner. You're an entrepreneur. And I don't care if you exist in a firm, an IBD, or you're an RAA, or part of an insurance company organization. At the end of the day, you have to run your business, period. So with systems, what kind of system are we talking about? The first thing I'm going to mention is going to be your CRM, which is code for client or customer relationship management or manager, CRM. So this would be Salesforce, this would be Redtail, this would be Wealthbox, whatever else, Act back in the day, Act for Advisor back in the day, Maximizer, I mean, I mean, all these things out there. So here's an important thing. Your CRM is the central nervous system of your business. Let me repeat that. Your CRM is the central nervous system of your business. So. When I am talking to a, a new client or we're on network doing a Zoom coaching cast, and I'll ask a question, well, how well do you know your CRM? And again, it doesn't matter which one you have. And I hear like four or five. Some people say it's like a Rolodex, right? Like that's it. You have to commit. And and you, I don't care if you run a multi-billion dollar shop. If you're in the CRM, you better know it. We lead by example. So one of the quick things to get, a, I mean, a great return on investment, a great return is mastering your client relationship manager. I mean, it just, in my experience is, it could, you could build out workflows, automate things, systematize, streamline, it's everything. Now, the reason why a lot of advisors don't do this 
is because it looks overwhelming, it's cumbersome, you have a belief that I'm not good with technology, or you're just, you know, I don't have time. So let's handle the time thing first. The reason why you don't have time is because you're trying to be busy, get things done, not elevate and grow your business. And there's a difference there. You've all had, we've all had this phenomena where we get up, we get in, we get going, and we get done, and we look back and say, I was busy all day. I really didn't know what I accomplished today. That's busy. I'm talking about setting aside time. Now, and if you look, if you're better off like immersing you, there's two, there's two ways of learning, right? One is like we'll call virtual incremental, and the other is immersion, okay? Personally, myself, I like immersion. I have no problem jumping on an airplane, going somewhere for a couple days, and learning. That works best for me. If I can do that, I prefer that. If I can't, then I'll go the other way. But if I go the other way, I'm not going to sit there and say, well, I'm going to learn, I'm going to spend, I'll take 30 minutes between my appointments and I'm going to learn something. No. You need to carve out strategic time. Three to four hour blocks minimally. So like an afternoon, like think in terms of half days, minimum. Morning, afternoon. Full days. 24 hour period, right? Or eight hour period. And I'm going to learn. So that's the first thing. So CRM, absolutely got to get. Next system you got to learn is whatever you're using from a financial planning standpoint. So again, whether it's Money Guide Pro, eMoney, Right Capital, you know, Asset Map, whatever you're using, you want to maximize the effectiveness. So many advisors that drive and just drives me crazy sometimes. They'll invest money in capital in systems, right? They'll buy CRM. They'll get a planning software. They'll get get Asset Map or whatever. And they don't really learn it. They kind of learn 20% of it, 30% of it. And you're still going to get a good return on your investment, by the way, just knowing 30%. But what would happen if you really kind of mastered it? Hi, Coach Joe Lucas here, and I'm just breaking here for a moment just to do a couple quick reminders. Number one, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or our podcast. In addition, please leave a, a comment or a review. Those things really, really matter and uh, share this episode with three of your colleagues inside the financial services space. And lastly, make sure that you go ahead and claim your free membership inside of Magellan Network. Now back to this week's episode. A lot of times what we have found is if a small organization can master their technology, you could delay hiring people because you get more efficient, more effective. And we all know people are expensive. If I look at my clients, the ones, my empire guys, who are running like really enterprise level practices, other than owner comp and maybe taxes, the largest line item is people. People slash people capital. Largest line item. And getting more expensive every year. I mean, outstripping inflation, big time. So what systems do is it buys you time and runway to scale your business without having to add as many people. It's critically important. Okay, next. So those are your software. Two pieces of key software, right? And then, you know, we'll talk about other things real quick here. But like, for example, you need a system how you're going to allocate money. It drives me crazy. you got to have it systematized and scalable in my perfect world with discretion. So if you're an RIA, you already have discretion, no big deal there. But for some of you who got the, you know, you've got all these one-off portfolios out there, and first of all, you can't track it all. And then if you, we should probably do a whole thing on discretion at some point. But if you're trying to run money and you don't have discretion, you are screwing your client. And here's why I say that. And I don't mean intentionally. Is if you want to get out, let's say you have 100 clients in a position, Right? And you don't have discretion. And you decide, I'm going to trade out of that position. Let me ask you a question. Who's the first phone call? Who's the, who's the 50th phone call? Who's the last phone call? How about if you call somebody and don't get back to you for two weeks? That's a problem. Any good attorney, if they find, you know, if somebody's pissed about this, and you say, well, why didn't you get me out of this? Well, I had to call these people. Like, well, why didn't you call me first? You know, we talk about fiduciary standard. Well, let's... Again, here's an area that is a gap in my opinion. So you need to have system run money and allocate money, right? One of my clients I just talked to, he runs his own money down in Texas, and he put his system in place. And I talked to him the other day, and he goes, 
what a relief. And here's where I got discretion. What a relief, man. I, you know, I've got it all built out now. I don't have to work, you know, it's just all automated. I punch a couple buttons to make it to tweak the portfolio, and it's like one tenth the energy you spent. That's a system. Okay, you need that. Next, you need a system to serve your client. So, what is your client? So, I'm gonna talk about client communication and client contact. Advisors put them into one. They're terrible. So what's client contact? How many times we're gonna reach out? Somebody on our team, either via email, phone call, bomb, bomb, do a check in. Client communication system. What are we sending them? Newsletters, email pieces, things like that, right? So, communication, contact, two different systems. Do not lock them. Next, a system for reviews. How often do they get reviews? What's the prep look like? What do we do inside of the review? Some of you guys just wing it. Like, I swear, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna, whatever I feel like today, that's gonna be the flavor of the day. That is not scalable, it is not teachable, it will not get the job done. So you need a system for prep for the review. It goes on in the room. Now we have uh, here an eight-step protocol that we run, right, that I teach. And then what happens at the end? All has gotta be systematized, right? Then the other thing is, when somebody reaches out to you, say, hey, I want to talk to you. So-and-so referred me or COI referred me or they just found you out of the internet. It happens. What does that system look like? So what does meeting one look like? What happens between meeting one and meeting two? And again, in our world, we use get the yes, which is our prospect to client conversion system. What's our intro look like? What's our consultation looks like? What does the debrief look like? What does the project look like? Think of it four legs on top of the uh, prospect table. What does that look like, right? What is your system to run your business so far as your team meetings? Client, you know, team agendas. All those things. Some of my clients are running EO, are really diving into EOS. Why EOS? Entrepreneurial operating. What's that last word? System. Why? Because systems equal scale. And even if you're a solopreneur lifestyle practice, systems and systemization or at some levels, I think almost more important. Because the more automation you have, the less likely you need to go hire somebody. Or you can probably get away with maybe a part-time assistant or one full-time assistant. And you can jam on. And it's great, right? And you'd be uber profitable. You don't have that. But you've got to spend time. I know there's that four-letter word, T-I-M-E. you got to carve it out. So here's one thing I want you to think about. Scale 1 to 10. And there should be no 10s, by the way. How well do you know your CRM? Scale of 1 to 10, how well do you know your planning software? Scale of 1 to 10, how well do you, do you really have your clients dialed in on your communication? Scale of 1 to 10, contact. Scale of 1 to 10, prospect client conversion process. Scale of 1 to 10, I want you to take every area and rank yourself scale of 1 to 10. And then I will tell you, you know, well, Joe, what's the priority? I'm going to tell you right now, it's your CRM. And I know if you're at a firm, you know, look, I get it. There's, I'm looking into names of, you know, trust me. I know, I know, I've heard all the horror stories. I know your firm's technology sucks. I get it. I hear it all the time. But let me say this. You can have a car that is not going to win a race, but it'll still get you places. But if you don't know how to operate or drive it at the highest level, you can get more out of it. So let's just say you're at a firm and... And their CRM kind of, you know, sucks. Don't sit there and throw up your hands, especially if you cannot have an alternative. Don't throw up your hands and say, oh, man, you know, just it's not me. Firm stuff sucks. I'm just a victim here. That's what most advisors do. They victimize themselves. Oh, man, I can't do it. It's not what we do here. So make sure that no matter what you have, if you, if you can get something to best of breed, I gave you three recommendations on CRM. All my clients use something, one of those three, they work really well. But even if you've got someone that does work, commit to mastering it because they'll still do more for you than you would think. It may be cumbersome, problematic, but learn that. Next, learn your planning software. Critically important, right? Just get comfortable with it. It'll make you money. Mastering technology, it's really kind of a bifurcated scenario. Either it's a pain in your tail slash and it holds you back or you embrace it and it really becomes an economic driver for you. It's really your choice, okay? So, 
That concludes our three-part series on how to scale your business. Again, you, people, systems. And again, there are a lot of great people that do systems, a lot of practice management people. I mean, ask for recommendations. If you need somebody that you're looking to help integrate your practice, I can make some recommendations. It will not be me, but I can make some recommendations for you. Some very high-end people that do it, that have an excellent track record, which I recommend to my personal clients. So if you have anything, reach out. And don't forget to check us out at MagellanNetwork.net. Until next week, have a great one. See you then. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. Hey, if any of this resonated with you, I invite you to come to MagellanNetwork.net and we have a powerful group coaching community of like-minded advisors. Come in for a trial. You and I will have a one-on-one conversation. Let's see if I can help elevate your game both personally and professionally.